Hello everyone, and once again, welcome to Maytech. It's been a while since I've done a video on clamping, so today I'm going to review the methods that I've been most recently using to hold things down to my work bed. We're going to be looking at two different tape methods I've been using, and we'll also be looking at three different types of clamps, which are basically the only clamps that I've been using these days. Just before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so so we can keep you updated on all the future releases. Okay, let's jump into this video. So we're gonna start by looking at the tapes. I'm gonna show you two methods, one that uses masking tape and CA glue, and another method that uses double-sided woodworking tape. Just a quick note, if you plan to use tape to hold down your projects, you'll wanna make sure that you have a nice clean surface for them to adhere to. Here I'm just using a quarter inch piece of scrap finishing plywood I had kicking around, but you can also use MDF if that's what you have. You'll also want to make sure to vacuum up any wood dust on your surfaces before you apply the tape. Now the main advantage to using tapes to hold down your CNC projects is the simple fact that there isn't any clamps to get in the way of your milling, so that allows you to work to the very edges of your project without having to worry about hitting any clamps. Let's first look at the masking tape method. For this method, I prefer to use a construction grade masking tape, which will have a strong adhesive. The type of adhesive that the tape will have will be listed on the inside roll of the tape. If you're working on something delicate, you can also use a blue tape, which usually has a medium adhesive. To make sure you get a proper bond, you're gonna to wanna to make sure whatever side of your project you are taping is flat and clean. I've already went ahead and flattened this side down with the disc sander and then quickly hit it with the vacuum to remove any dust. Now you'll wanna take your tape and apply it in parallel strips to the prepared side of your project. The more strips of tapes you use, the better your project will be held to your machining base. Once you've applied the tape, you'll want to turn your project over, then using a pencil, mark all the edges of your tape to your machining base. Using the marks you just made as a guide, use them to apply a layer of masking tape to your base surface that matches up to the layer of masking tape you have on your working piece. You can then take your project and make sure the two layers of tape match up. Now for the gluing process, you will want to use some CA glue accelerator. If you haven't used CA glue accelerator before, it basically just causes the CA glue to almost instantly bond. As for CA glue, I prefer to use a medium thickness of glue. The next step is to take your accelerator and spray a nice even coating onto the tape that's on your base surface. Now taking your workpiece, apply a line of CA glue to the middle of each strip of masking tape. Once that's done, flip your piece back over and matching up your two layers of tape, press your piece down and hold it in place for about 10 seconds. And after about a 10 count, you'll find that if you did everything right, your workpiece will be strongly held to your machine. Of course, you probably want to know how to release your workpiece from your machine bed, and you do this simply by using one of these handy paint scraper tools. Using your scraper, carefully work it into one of the bottom corners of your workpiece, separating the tape from your work surface. You can then peel the masking tape off your project, and as you can see, the tape has left my project clean without any damage or any glue residue left behind. Now let's have a look at the double-sided woodworking tape. I've been using this tape a lot lately simply because it's quick and easy to apply and it works really well for holding down these hardwood thins that I've been cutting a lot of. The brand I'm using is from X-Fasten 
but there are other brands out there and they're all available in different widths. To use this tape, simply apply it in strips onto a nice clean surface on your project. With the more strips you use, the better bond to your working surface you'll get. Once you've applied all your tape strips, remove the adhesive backing on each strip. Then just flip the piece over and attach it to your spoiler board base with some pressure. That's all there is to it. And as you can see, you now have a nice strong attachment to your spoiler board base. To unattach your project from the base, get yourself a scraper and work it under the project until you've loosened the tape enough that you can pull the project free by hand. You can then remove the rest of the tape from your project by hand. It should not leave any damage on your project, but it may leave a bit of residue which you should quickly be able to remove by simply picking at it. The only issue I've had with using this tape is that it may leave some residue onto your CNC bits, but that can easily be removed with a little bit of solvent. Now let's move on and look at clamps. All the clamps I'm using here are meant for use on the T-slot rail system, but you can of course get similar clamps that will mount directly to your spoiler board. We'll be looking at two different types of plastic toe clamps here, along with these metal spring-loaded hold-down clamps. I typically use clamps over tape when I'm cutting larger projects and or I'm using large aggressive bits. Let's have a look at these spring-loaded hold-down clamps first. These were an impulse buy that I got from Amazon simply because they were on for a great deal. And I'm surprisingly finding myself using these clamps all the time simply because they're so convenient. Not only do they have a good range, a different material thickness they can adjust to, they also have this knob that lets you quickly tighten and loosen them without needing another tool like an Allen wrench. Now the disadvantage of hold down clamps is you may accidentally hit them with your CNC bit while you're milling your project. And because these clamps are made of a solid aluminum, you might actually cause some damage to your bit so you should be aware of that before using a hold down style like this. The next clamps we're going to be looking at are these low profile toe clamps from Carbide 3D. Toe clamps are meant to clamp down on the side of the wood instead of the top of the wood, as you can see here. This keeps them out of the way of your CNC bits, allowing you to mill the complete surface of your project. Toe clamps are typically used with these stops, so you typically only have to clamp one side of your project. To use them, you slide the stops down on one side, then tighten them with your Allen wrench. Then slide your clamp into place and tighten the T-slot mounting bolt. You can then go tighten the horizontal bolt snugging your project into place. Your project is now locked in and ready for milling. I typically use these lower profile toe clamps when I'm working on smaller pieces or when I need to surface a piece of wood that isn't very thick. The next clamps we're going to look at are these heavy duty toe clamps once again from Carbide 3D. They've branded these the Crush It Clamp which I think is a pretty good name for them. The mechanism on the front, which slides down and clamps your workpiece, works differently than the low profile version, as this mechanism tightens downwards, not horizontally, and is also spring loaded. You can also see that the T-slot bolt mountain area has a metal liner, which allows you to really tighten down the clamp to your T-slot. And like most toe clamps, they also come with these stops. Using these clamps is exactly the same as using the low profile version. First install the stop, then place your toe clamp into place, 
tightening the T-slot bolt. Then tighten your front bolt to lock your project into place. Now these are the toe clamps that I use most often, especially when I'm working with larger pieces as they're able to really lock your project into place. I also use them all the time when I'm surfacing my work pieces. So that's about it for this video. When it comes down to it, the type of method you use to hold down your workpiece really depends on what you're working on. So it's always beneficial to have multiple methods available to you so you can adapt to any project you have coming up next. I'll have a link to my site below if you want to find out any more information on these products or where to get them. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.